meeting of the Corville City Council to order on October 23rd, 2018. Roll call. Councilmember Foster. Present. Gross. Here. Gill. Present. Dodds. Present. Goodrich. Here. Uh, all council members are present, as is the mayor and city clerk, city administrator, city attorney, and several staff in the audience. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Gill and seconded by Goodrich. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, next order of business is uh, we have one proclamation uh, this evening for United Nations Day. I'd like to read it. City of Corville Proclamation. Whereas the United Nations was founded at the end of World War II to try to bring together a world devastated by war and injustice. And whereas the United Nations continues to provide a forum for countries to work together for security and development to make progress towards combating disease, hunger, and poverty to support action to combat climate change and to encourage quality education for all. And whereas 2018 is the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, in which the nations of the world define fundamental freedoms to be enjoyed by all people everywhere. And whereas the United Nations works through a variety of agencies to provide peacekeepers in war ravaged areas to support refugees from wars and discrimination and to encourage international cooperation. And whereas the United Nations benefits the people of Iowa by protecting the environment, curbing climate change, preventing the spread of infectious disease, facilitating international air travel, and expanding markets for Iowa farm and factory products by improving standards of living worldwide. And whereas the United Nations promotes values and practices cherished by Iowans, including respect for life, the peaceful resolution of conflict, assistance to those in need, human dignity, and self-government. Now therefore, be it resolved, be it proclaimed that I, Mayor John A. Lundell, do hereby declare October 24th, 2018 as United Nations Day, and I hereby encourage all citizens, residents, and visitors to join in observing this day and focusing on the vision of a world filled with peace and justice, brought about by the cooperation of all nations. Signed this 23rd day of October 2018. John A. Lundell, Mayor. We have Britta uh, Loftus in the audience to receive this tonight. Britta, if you'd like to come up. And you'd like a picture, so I'll, uh, sure, I'll come around and. Sure, thank you. If you don't mind. Congratulations. <coughs> My name is Britta Loftus and I'm on the board of the Johnson County chapter of the United Nations Association of Iowa. I'm also a resident of Coralville. I'm a graduate of the Uni University of Iowa College of Law and a graduate of the United Nations University down in Costa Rica. Mm. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that one of our goals through the United Nations Association is letting people know about the work of the United Nations and how it impacts their lives. And one of the ways that we do this is through public programming. So tomorrow, in honor of UN Day, we have a panel entitled Bridging the Gap, a conversation about human rights, civil rights, and social justice. It's going to take place tomorrow at 2 PM at Old Brick. And we'll be joined by the internationally renowned human rights education expert, Nancy Flowers. And also on the panel will be State Senator Joel Bolcom, James McKenney, the warden at the Iowa Medical Classification Center, and also Professor Adrian Wing with the Center of Human Rights at the University. Um, so again, that event is tomorrow, 2 p.m. at Old Brick. And we hope you all can join in that conversation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome to stay, or you can leave if you prefer. Yeah, so, sure. Okay, uh, item five is citizen comments. This is for the uh, time for anyone in the audience like to speak to us tonight about an item that's not already on the agenda. Would anyone like to speak? Seeing and hearing none, we'll move right into item six, which is a golf cart lease agreement. 
This is a lease for 60 golf carts and two beverage carts at the Brown Deer Golf Course for five years. The public hearing will be on November 13th. Resolution setting a public hearing on the proposal to enter into a lease agreement with Yamaha Motor Corporation at the Brown Deer Golf Course. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gill. Discussion? Roll call. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Resolutions approved all ayes. Item seven is an interagency agreement. This is a proposed <laughs> amendment. Um, this, this, this proposed amendment updates the agreement to a rolling document renewed annually um, with the Iowa City Community School District for the before and after school program at Borlaug, Van Allen, and Wickham Elementary Schools. Resolution approving an amendment to the interagency agreement with the Iowa City Community School District for the before and after school program at Borlaug, Van Allen, and Wickham Elementary Schools. Introduced for adoption by Councilmember Gross, seconded by. Second. Second by Goodrich. Discussion? Yeah, this will basically change the agreement so it's a rolling instead of having to be adopted each year individually. Very good. Anything else? Roll call. Gill? Aye. Dodds? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Foster? Aye. Gross? Aye. Uh, resolution is approved all ayes. Item eight is the Coralville Colab. Um, this is a resolution uh, for reimbursement for startup costs for the Corval Colab, not to exceed forty thousand dollars at eight oh eight on Fifth Complex. Resolution approving an agreement with Iowa City Area Development to assist in opening the Coralville Colab at the eight oh eight on Fifth Complex. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Gill, seconded by. Second. Second by Dodds. <coughs> Discussion. This will be a replacement for the one that we had um, about four years ago out off of um, Core Ridge Avenue. Um, we've been um, working with the landlord at um, 808 on 5th, and they have given us a very good rate. And the space is all finished, offices are available, and um, depending on the success, there is a, um, other space that we could expand into um, if we... Um, do as well as we hope to. Good. Good. Any other discussion? Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Resolutions approved all ayes. Item nine is the engineering services agreement with Terracon Consultants, uh, which compensates them for additional borings, monitoring wells, and coordination with the DNR to address contamination found in the uh, near 802 Quarry Road. Resolution approving an agreement with Terracon Consultants, Inc. for additional environmental assessments at 802 Quarry Road. Introduced for adoption by Councilmember Dodd, seconded by. Second. Second by Foster. Discussion? Roll call. Gross. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Gill. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Resolutions right. approved all ayes. Item 10 is a consulting, also a consulting services agreement with RDG for landscape and streetscape design services in the Iowa River Landing District. Resolution approving agreements with RDG Iowa for landscape and streetscape design services in the Iowa River Land District, Landing District. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gross. Discussion? Yeah, this um, design work will include some changes and additional landscaping for the north of 9th Street area, the existing I, um, uh, developed areas in I River Landing, and then we'll also include the new arena <coughs> and East 2nd Avenue south of um, 9th as well. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Roll call. Gill? Aye. Dodds? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Foster? Aye. Gross? Aye. Resolution is approved all eyes. Item 11 is 1507 Brown Deer Road Storm Sewer Repair Project. And we'll start with a quotation report from Assistant City Engineer Scott Larson. All right, thank you, Mayor. So we re only received two bids on this project last week and the low bid was from BWC Excavating out of Solon. Uh, their bid was $46,165. Now, our engineer's estimate was 37435 so obviously it came in high. Um, however, I did look at the unit prices and also taking into account that this
project corridor is a little bit narrow because we're asking the contractor to do all their work within an existing 20 foot wide public storm sewer easement. Unlike some of the other projects we've talked about recently in that same area, this is the one area where we actually have a public storm sewer easement available to us. So, um, so the bid came in high, uh, but the other thing that we've actually been looking into, and I'm hopeful now that this will end up in ultimately a lower overall uh, total project cost, is that it appears that we can actually rehabilitate approximately the first 30 feet of pipe that, it, that runs east of Brown Deer Road. And that's important because that will get us hopefully past the existing water main sanitary sewer and other private utilities that run parallel to the road so instead of having to open trench avoid hitting you know getting around all these utilities we might be able to rehabilitate the inside of the pipe using a, a pipelining technique that we actually used on um, sanitary sewer on fifth street back with the uh, 2015 street reconstruction project so we're still investigating that as a possible uh, modification this project and again we wouldn't do it if it's going to raise the the cost any more than than what it is but we're actually hopeful that it may result in an overall lower uh, project cost so um, and this is the same contractor that was awarded the old hickory lane storm sewer repair so it's nice to have one contractor uh, two projects in a very uh, tight area and I am meeting with that contractor tomorrow morning to discuss the details, answer any additional questions. So they're kind of in the process of gearing up to, to get started on both of these projects. Okay, thank you, Scott. The resolution done? Resolution accepting quotation and awarding contract for the 1507 Brown Deer Road Storm Sewer Repair Project. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Second. Ah, close. Good, Rich. Um, any discussion? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Good, Rich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Uh, resolutions approved all ayes. Item 12 is angle parking, snow and ice removal and sweeping. This is for snow and ice removal and one-time postseason sweeping for the 5th Street and 6th Avenue angle parking from November 15th to April of this year to April 15th of 2019. And start with a quotation report. Um, I'm taking Vicki's place. She wanted to be here, but she's with a, she has a work, uh, something from work she had to take care of. So I told her I would take care of this. We received uh, three bids on Monday for this project. We have done, this will be the third year doing this. Uh, the bids range from 16200 to 20500 The low bidder was Jay Harding, Inc. in the amount of 16200 And that is the bid we would... Uh, recommend approval. They did the um, work the first year, Forever Green did the work the second year, and Forever Green was the second lowest bid. So so this is, uh, we recommend approval uh, of the Jay Harding bid in the amount of $16,200. Thank you, Kevin. Don? Resolution accepting quotation and awarding contract for the angle parking, snow, ice removal, and sweeping. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Gross, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gill. Discussion? Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Uh, resolutions approved all ayes. I would consider a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented or amended. Move to approve consent calendar items A through double H inclusive. Second. Moved by Gill, seconded by Dodds. Discussion? Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Consent calendar is approved. All ayes. Item 14 is a city engineer road construction report. And Scott Larson. Thank you. So tomorrow's a, another big day on First Avenue. The traffic shift is on schedule to happen or start happening after the morning rush hour. And so through the course of the morning and likely into the early to mid afternoon, the contractor will be in the process of shifting the uh, concrete barriers and the plastic barriers more or less over uh, to push all the traffic to the, um, the west half of First Avenue. And I, I sent out a press release, I think that was just yesterday, um, 
The pedestrians will have access to the new sidewalk along the west side of First Avenue, except between Days Inn and Pipeline Road or just south of McDonald's. And that's because there is ongoing retaining wall work in there. So through that stretch, we're actually gonna put pedestrians in the far west uh, edge of the new uh, First Avenue pavement, but they'll have that same level of protection with the concrete barriers and the orange fencing like they've had for the duration of the project. And so once those retaining walls get built, which we should see those hopefully substantially complete by the end of this week, that'll open up that area for uh, the sidewalk to be constructed. So hopefully it won't be too much longer before pedestrians will have free access to the entire length of First Avenue on the west side. And the key, uh, the, the key point of shifting traffic to the west half is then it opens up the entire east half all the way up to uh, just south of Perkins for total reconstruction. And so that will mean tearing out the temporary pavement that everybody's been driving on since April. And the remainder of the old First Avenue pavement, uh, there's still remnants of it out there. And once they do that, um, there's just a few short storm sewer extensions. And then it's uh, grading, putting the rock uh, subbase down, and paving. So we, uh, we really expect to see a rapid progression on the east half, more so than on the west half, because we're just not gonna be fighting all those underground utility conflicts like we've, we've had and under, other underground issues that we've experienced on the, uh, the west half of the project. So uh, we will be watching uh, closely to make sure everything goes as planned tomorrow. And then we're just uh, obviously continuing to push hard to make sure that we get four lanes of, of First Avenue open uh, before the end of the season, so. Uh, Coral Ridge Avenue. We are continuing to make progress uh, looking toward that point where we can hopefully eliminate the detour route. Um, unfortunately, uh, due in part to the, the severe rain events we had, that that next traffic shift is now scheduled for November 5th. So in the meantime, what they're trying to do is finish up the pedestrian crossing along the north side of the Coral Ridge Avenue at Oakdale Boulevard intersection. They, uh, it's the last Friday, they tested the traffic signals at that same intersection to make those, make sure those are working. And then they're doing a lot of work within the raised center median that, that runs the, almost the entire stretch of that project. So that's a combination of brick pavers and ultimately areas that do get some plantings. And they're trying to get that center median done so that when we do ultimately get rid of the detour route, traffic will run one lane each direction up against that center median while the contractors continue to work on the outside of that area, tying in intersections, doing corners, et cetera. So we are, um, we're seeing good progress out there on the, the traffic signals and the lighting. So uh, we will keep uh, pushing forward on that project as well. And just a brief update on the Clear Creek Trail project. We haven't heard much about that for a while. It's been partially underwater uh, with Clear Creek coming up uh, for the past several weeks, uh, but we, do actually expect the first um, trail paving to start tomorrow or Thursday. So they have one of the permanent bridges, one of the new bridges done, and then the other one north of Interstate 80 is partially uh, underway but was impacted by the flood a little bit or the Clear Creek uh, uh, flood level. But uh, we expect the trail paving to begin tomorrow or Thursday. And I believe the plan is they're gonna start at Creekside Ballpark and pave back to the east. And it's about two or three days of work, they tell us, um, to connect Clear Creekside Ballpark back to the existing end of the Clear Creek Trail system. So hopefully that'll come together very quickly too. And uh, again, the goal is to get that, that stretch out to Creekside Ballpark open to the public um, sometime in November. Any questions? Questions for Scott? I just, I just have one. Um, on the reta retaining walls um, on First Avenue, Will they be faced with anything once they're, I mean, they're just poured concrete now? The, is there? Yeah, they don't look that great, do they? <laughs> no, we, we are facing those with the uh, the limestone veneer. So the nearest example would be the, the short wall in front of Brugger's Bakery. Okay, that would so, be nice. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Item 15 is city administrator's report. Um, yes, uh, just. Um, one to tell let everybody know that tomorrow is the public hearing at the state um, certificate of need for the two proposed 
um, inpatient hospitals, and so um, we should hear shortly thereafter uh, what the states, um, whether they granted a certificate of need to one or both of those hospitals. So we look forward to having them move forward uh, in the near future. That's it. That's it? Okay. Um, I'm also going to be very brief tonight in the mayor's report. Um, mainly, I'm just going to encourage folks to go to the city website because there's information on dates of a fall leaf pickup, um, the uh, cemetery cleanup, uh, fall cleanup in, the, in our cemetery, uh, Halloween trick-or-treating, and if you're really interested in hydrant flushing, it's on there too. <laughs> so, uh, so just uh, there's a lot of uh, good information if, that's, uh, if those items are of interest to you. City attorney's report. I'm not going to interrupt the speed run, Kevin. Nope. <laughs> Committee and council members' reports. Lori, we'll start with I you. I don't have anything, thanks. Uh -huh. Phil? Um, I was just going to say that uh, Mayor Pro Tem Gross and Councilor Goodrich and I did a ribbon cutting out at the new playground equipment out at the Creekside Ballpark, and there were a lot of kids there playing on it. It seemed to get good approval. They helped cut the ribbon. Um, so if you're out there playing ball, take your kids along and let them check it out. And uh, just be safe for Halloween. Thanks. Tom. I have nothing. Thank you. Yeah. Mitch? Well, I'll cross that one off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to just report to it from the joint meeting, and there really wasn't much to report. It might have been the fastest joint meeting we've yeah. ever had. It was like less than an hour, so it was a quickie. Uh, the one issue that came up for Corvo was actually the trail, so thanks, Scott, for that uh, update. I did want to give... Uh, a huge shout out to uh, Lieutenant uh, Deb Summers on the award that she won. If, if anyone didn't see the paper, uh, you know, and a lot of our employees have won a lot of cool awards, but I think this is one of the most special ones that I've read that Lieutenant Summers was recognized uh, by Johnson County for her work uh, in the uh, prevention of domestic violence and won the Pat Meyer Vision Award. So, uh, Chief, please pass on our congratulations to uh, Lieutenant Summers for that great award. And then finally, this is kind of quick and out of, off the cuff, but as I was driving here, I, the, I was listening through the radio, and Iowa City is offering free busing on election day to help people get to the polls. Uh, I think it's something I'd be interested in, in seeing if that's something we can do as well to remove that barrier from voting. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thanks. Megan. Uh, I actually concur um, with Mitch. I think that would be a really fantastic idea. I hope that that is something that we can um, look at getting done. Um, I, uh, the only thing I really wanted to share um, was uh, uh, some information about a meeting that I attended a couple weeks ago. It was called the State of Poverty in Johnson County, and actually we talked about it at that joint meeting. Um, I highly encourage folks to uh, go to the county's website and take a look at the, the notes and the slides from that meeting, um, there was a lot of fantastic information uh, pertaining to you know, uh, some of the struggles that our lower income and, and frankly some of our uh, more moderate um, income folks um, are facing in Johnson County. And one of the things that really struck me about that meeting was that um, the four topics that they talked about, um, affordable housing, wages, transportation, and um, child care and education were also the same things that were mentioned at um, ICAD's annual meeting. So um, those are um, workforce development issues, they are economic development issues, I think that they are also social justice issues. And so I hope that um, we can kind of keep those areas of overlap in mind as we continue our work as a council, and especially um, as we start looking at our um, budget and our goals um, for the upcoming year. And um, yeah, I highly encourage people to check that information out um, on the county's website. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Megan. Um, I, was, I just recalled a couple more quick things I've mentioned. One is this coming Sunday is the annual um, Corville Food Pantry Fun Run um, out at, uh, out at the, uh, the youth sports complex. It's a, they've added a 10K run. So it's both a five and a 10K walk run. So um, I think it starts at nine o'clock. So. It's a great opportunity to have fun, get some exercise, and support the Corville Food Pantry. And then also, I just wanted to mention the, uh, Jill, you remind me when you mentioned ribbon cuttings. It wasn't exactly a ribbon cutting, but it was the opening of the foundry in the Iowa River Landing on Friday evening. Uh, the foundry's in the space formerly occupied by the Lux Zone, and it's a great, uh, great space that is occupied now by um, 
students from the University of Iowa, entrepreneurial students from the University of Iowa that have products and wares to, to display and sell. Everything from clothing to artistic items to um, planters for flowers, uh, just a number of different inter interesting things that those students have developed. So it's always going to always be changing with um, new products and new students, so it's worth stopping in and checking out. So. Unless there's more for the good of the order, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Okay, moved by Gill, seconded by Gross. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.